Hallelujah. Numbers 13, 30. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord that I read. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored divorced those living in it. All the people we saw there of great size, giants. We saw the Nephthalim. They are the descendants of Anak that have come from Nephilim. We also seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And so we seem to them. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in your hearts. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, before we sit, go with me to Numbers 14, 28. Numbers 14, 28. Numbers 14, 28. If you are there, say Amen. Okay, it says, so tell them, this is the Lord speaking now. So tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I had you say. Father, we thank you because you are faithful. May the entrance of your word give light on our path today. And may the spoken word give understanding to us. So you can lead us to the path we should follow to our destiny. Until such a time that our breakthrough is visible to all eyes. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. And the church of God say, Amen. Take your seat in his presence as we take the word of God. I want to start with a quote from Shakespeare. Shakespeare once said, Sweet are the uses of adversity. Say after me, sweet. Are the, are the uses of adversity. Of adversity. Mm, that was a quote from Shakespeare. Sweet are the uses of adversity. Which means every situation, no matter how terrible, has a blessing disguised in it. Sweet. Huh? Mm. Every situation, no matter how terrible, has something good. You may want to write down that quote. Sweet are the uses of adversity. Sweet are the uses of adversity. You can, you can also put it in your own words. The advantage of adversity. Or the benefit of adversity. What is adversity? Adversity are situations that are contrary to peace and happiness. Adversity, uh, adversities are challenges of life. Amen. Adversity comes in different dimensions. So Shakespeare said, sweet are the uses of adversity. Which means every situation, no matter how terrible, has a blessing in disguise, hiding inside it. Hallelujah. Every situation, no matter how terrible, has a blessing in disguise, hiding in it. John Osmond, I spoke to you about him on Thursday. John Osmond was an, uh, uh, happened to be an entrepreneur, an American entrepreneur. He has the largest uh, household plastic manufacturing company in the U.S. of A. He once said, if there is a silver lining to bad times, it is this. When facing severe challenges, the mind is normally at his sharpest. Amen. He said, if there is a silver lining, what is silver lining? Silver lining is a ray of hope in the face of hopelessness. You understand? What does silver lining mean? It means a ray of hope in the face of hopelessness. And John Osman was saying, if there is a silver lining, when facing bad times or severe challenges, I mean, when this is bad time, it is this. When facing severe challenges, the mind is normally at its sharpest. If there is a silver lining to bad times, it is this. When facing severe challenges, the mind is normally at its sharpest. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the question is this. 
Will you dare to use your mind to navigate your way out of your bad times? Will you dare do that? Because this man is saying, if there is a silver lining in bad times, it is this. When facing severe challenges, the mind is at its sharpest. It means when you are down and are seeing you cannot rise again. That is when your mind is ready to bring a change your way. But the question is this. Will you be willing to use your mind to navigate your way out of your bad times? Praise the name of the Lord. That's why the Bible talks about renewing your mind. The Bible talks about what? Renewing your, your mind. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why today... I am speaking on a message I have titled The Mindset of Dominion. The Mindset of Dominion. Say after me, The Mindset of Dominion. Say it louder. Yeah, I'm speaking on a message titled The Mindset of Dominion. From the scripture I've read to you in the book of Numbers 13. If you start reading from verse 1, it was a place where God told Moses, appoint a leader from each of the twelve tribes of Israel, let them go and investigate the land I have promised Abraham. Because I'm about to take you into the fulfillment of your destiny. So you go see what the land, the land looks like so that you can prepare yourself to possess. Hallelujah. Now, the promised land is near. But the warfare is much. If there is a silver lining in bad times, it is this. The mind is sharpest when it is going through severe challenges. So they appointed 12 amongst the tribes. Caleb and Joshua happens to be among the 12. There were all the 10. So they went into the land, sent blood flows in their stream. They are all grandchildren of Abraham, isn't it? They have been fed by the same prophet, Moses, isn't it? They have been fed by the same man that came from heaven, isn't it? They have been fed by the queen. They have sat under the tutelage of Moses, a great prophet of God, a man who speaks eye to eye with God. Same teaching, same value, same curriculum, different perspective. Different what? Perspective. So they came to the land, saw what they were supposed to see. Caleb saw what he saw. Caleb saw the same men this guy saw. The same land this guy saw. The same, you know, topography this guy saw. The same vegetation this guy saw. The same view this guy saw was the same as what Caleb and Joshua saw. Now, when they came back to give the report to the camp, Moses asked, what is your report? Caleb steered the people up and said, let us go at once. For faithful is the promise of the Lord. For what the Lord said to us about the land is really true. Hallelujah. And the people that I saw, they are nothing but mismate for us. Amen. Same as Joshua. Then the other guy said, no, it's not possible. The land that we went, Without, if it is the same land that Caleb is talking about. Because the people who saw that land, they are horrible and scary. They said, it is the land that swallows its inhabitants. Is that true? If the land swallows its inhabitants, how come the people are still alive? Perspectives. If the land swallows its inhabitants, how did they survive the swallowing? Because they brought fruit out of that land. You know that? Grapes and pomegranates. You know? Fruitful things. Beautiful things. And they said, we cannot go. We cannot go. Because these people are tired. They spoke something significant. They said, in our own eyes. Hello? In our own eyes, we are like grasshoppers. And so when we, in their eyes, they concluded for themselves and they purported to know what the enemy is thinking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And remember, 
Why they were giving that report to Moses? Invariably, they were giving the report to God indirectly. Because Moses did not command the exploration. God commanded it. Hallelujah. So that report they brought, as it were, was not for Moses. It was for who? So that was why in chapter 14, 28, the Lord said, what did the Lord say there? The Lord said, so tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. You know what they said? They said, we are like grasshoppers. We will be destroyed. We will be swallowed. We cannot possess the land. And the Lord said, because they have said that, and they have concluded that by their own mouth and reasoning, I will destroy them in the wilderness. Those ones who have despised my promise will not enter into my rest. Hallelujah. So, what is the difference between Moses, Caleb, and Joshua? Perspective. See, perspectives. Perspectives. The perspectives that they saw from the same view was different. Because they spoke from a mindset of victims. They spoke from what? A mindset of victims. But Caleb spoke from the mindset of a dominion covenant child of God. Hallelujah. And that is why today we are speaking on that topic. For you to understand that your mindset, your mindset determines the level of your comfortability. Your mindset does what? Your mindset determines the level of your comfortability. If you will prosper or remain poor, it's determined by your mindset. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Dominion is a thing you and I were created with. Dominion is a thing you and I were created with. It is one of the covenant pronouncements of God over his most prized creation, you. Hmm? I repeat, dominion is a thing you and I were created with. It is one of the covenant pronouncements of God over his most prized creation. Who is that creation? You. You are God's most prized creation. His greatest asset. God pronounced blessing of dominion over you at creation. God pronounced blessing of dominion over you at creation. For you to rule and to subdue. The ability to be in charge was imputed into you at your creation. One of your commandments on earth is for you to have rulership over the things around you. It spoke dominion into your DNA. A few days back, I was watching a documentary on, on how a woman gets pregnant. And I saw a new insight into what I thought biology taught us. We know when a woman is ready to conceive and the sperm comes in contact in her uterus with the eggs, we don't know what happened between the stage of release and the raise the run. Then we discovered from that documentary that the, air, the, 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 the specimen in the sperm runs in billions. You understand? Now, why they are running, some of them got destroyed on the way. But out of the millions of, that are released, only one can have access to the place of fertility. Hallelujah. So, you happen to be that one out of tens of millions. So, from creation, you are already dominating. But when you came on planet Earth, the team changed because of your environment and the people around you. And you forgot who you were. And you started living lesser than you ought to. Are you with me? So you are created with a covenant pronouncement of dominion. 
This message is going to talk a while, so be patient. Hallelujah. God pronounced dominion blessing over you. Say, be fruitful as well and multiply. You are created for increase. Say after me, I am created for dominion. Why are you speaking like you don't know what you are talking about? Say, I am created for dominion, for fruitfulness, for increase, for rulership. Say amen. amen. You are created with a mandate to dominate and not to be dominated. You are created with a mandate to dominate and not to be dominated. But today, the reverse is the case. Man is being dominated by things he ought to dominate. When you look through our world, you will discover that we are serving things that ought to serve us. And because we have allowed things that we are supposed to dominate, to dominate us, fear has crippled many of us that we have been stopped in our tracks. We cannot even fulfill destiny. Many of us cannot live to the full potential of our calling on earth because we have forgotten that we were created for dominion. Say, I am created for dominion. Why is it difficult for you to be in charge and have dominion here on earth? It's simple. Because your mindset is the void of dominion thinking. Because your mindset is what? The void of dominion thinking. Many of us only think less than we are and that has become a norm. Lord. The Lord. was talking to me last week. She used a certain phrase that made my heart to shiver. She was talking about people like us, ministers. And she said something that really bothers me. And she's right. She said, scandals has become the norm even though it was to, supposed to be exception. Scandals has become the norm for church people. Scandals, sex, sex, sexual scandals.